Welcome back. Well, generative AI has been a clear tailwind for some of the well-known big tech names like NVIDIA, of course. Our next guest sees potential for the technology in a different, less talked about group of stocks. Uh, and that's web tool platform names. He's initiating Yelp on his AI underdog thesis, resuming coverage on several other names, including GoDaddy, which is his topic. Let's bring in Raymond James analyst Josh Beck, along with our own Deirdre Bosa. Uh, for today's Tech Check, a very good afternoon to you both. So just talk us through, first of all, Josh, what we're talking about here uh, in terms of these web tool names. Why is AI uh, a, 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 strong, a strong factor for them too? Yeah, well, well, well thank you for, uh, for having me on the show. Um, you know, when you, when you peel back the, the web building space, I, you know, I think the, the knee-jerk reaction uh, from investors was, well, with these new tools, uh, it's easy to create images, uh, it's easy to create text. So the, the, the next line of thought was, well, it must be easy to replicate um, a, a web presence. And we don't think that's, that's the case. We actually think uh, these web builder tools, particularly GoDaddy, are really well positioned to embed these Gen AI tools into their own web stack and actually make it a lot easier uh, for small businesses to create a web presence. You know, I, I think the the what gets lost a little bit um, in the fray is it's pretty complex uh, to host a website. Uh, there's security aspects to it. Um, there's just regular kind of cloud hosting. Uh, there's inventory management. There's payments. There's a lot that goes into that. And I actually think it's easier for these um, web development platforms to embed AI versus the opposite. And, and that's why we're, we're constructive on the group and, and we see um, upside to about $150 at, at GoDaddy. So, so Dee, talk us through what the view is in, in Silicon Valley uh, as to whether these web tool names are actually threatened by AI or not. I think there's a very, very different view here in Silicon Valley. Just for instance, you have a new generation of kids who are going to be using this tool in the future to build websites. They're going to go to the ChatGPT store. They're going to go to a generative AI native company, i.e. built in this era like a builder AI or one of many others versus a GoDaddy that was, again, built in a different era that's more of an internet company than it is a generative AI company. So, Josh, I just wonder how you think that rolls out. Maybe there's a brief period where they're able to, you know, pull in APIs and allow for this sort of low-code, no-code AI wrapper for some websites. But how is that sustainable? Yeah, it, it, it's a great point. And I think this is a very common um, battle line in Silicon Valley right now. Obviously, if, if you look at the, the foundational model space, right, you have the incumbents, Google, Microsoft, right? You have labs, you have startups. They're, they're kind of all littered in, in the space. But but I think one of the, the learnings from the, the foundational model layer is there are real advantages to scale. And if you own the data mm -hmm. about these customers and you can incorporate some of the tools, there's a large advantage. The other point that I think is, is probably more important for uh, the web builder market is it has a little bit of a consumer element to it, like you said, uh, but you know these companies really lean into that. They spend about a billion dollars annually on marketing, so that when you go and you say, "Hey, I want to create a website," GoDaddy or one of these other um, platforms surfaces, and so you kind of they're in some ways um, the gatekeeper. I would say if you want a web presence. You have to have a domain. Uh, they're the largest domain registrant. And what they're doing is just making it very easy from, okay, you have a website mm -hmm. idea, here's a logo. Let us use generative AI. It, it, you know, a, a typical uh, logo design process could be weeks, it costs mm -hmm. a few hundred dollars. In this case, it's gonna be a fraction of that in terms of cost and time. And then they're gonna say, okay, we'll, we'll take this logo and build you a website. What do you think? Would you like to make the the, um, the tone more playful? Do you want to make it more serious? So I, I really think uh, it's a good point. There's going to be a lot mm -hmm. of, of new tools competing for this space, but but I uh -huh. think owning the domain makes makes it very and, strategic for them. And D, if uh, if someone was wanting to build a, a new website, but in the new era of uh, coding and, and AI, and you listed all the clever names that I, I don't understand, but um, w would you be going to the chat GPTs, the, the Microsoft AI tools, the Google AI tools, or are there smaller startups and companies that are, are kind of focusing specifically on 
website building? <laughs> Yeah, there's certainly smaller startups that are up and coming. I mentioned one, which is Builder AI, that says, you know, making a website, making an app right now is as easy as ordering a pizza. Still, it's not like mainstream, but it's hard to imagine a world in which you don't have a generation of AI companies that are native AI make this shift versus sort of some of the legacy names, just like what we saw in the mobile era, right? It led to the rise of brand new companies like Uber and Lyft and Airbnb that were able to build for a mobile era. And, you know, a lot of folks here in Silicon Valley say that you need to be in it and start from mm -hmm. scratch with that kind of experience and that, those kind of employees in order to be successful when you're seeing a platform shift this big.